chicos? Bienvenidos, pues ya esto es casi, mejor dicho, uno de los últimos videos de actualización para el paquete, pues que ya queda como mayormente con toda la estrategia y el motivo de quedarse como ya estable y de aquí en adelante es buena noticia de que los cambios van a ser muy poquitos y que pues tal vez no termine de romper el código esta vez pues en adelante porque esta vez en esta versión ya queda la mayoría de los objetivos que en, en un inicio pues se tuvo pero que se vino cambiando un montonón y en esta versión de 1.10 ya queda como estable toda la estrategia necesaria así que pues para las personas que ven este video ya sabrán de que de aquí en adelante su código pues mayormente con el ambiente de Prisma PHP pues va a tener una separación con el ORM que lo vamos a llamar Prisma PHP ORM y el otro es el ambiente que es el Prisma PHP entonces ya se dividió totalmente que lo vamos a ver también y pues de que de aquí en adelante solo tal vez va a ser configuraciones algunos ajustes poquito a poquito para que el des, la experiencia del desarrollo sea lo más eh, cómodo posible Así que también pues le quiero decir de que en este video pues vamos a intentar darle soporte al inglés también y ya pues ustedes mayormente ya saben de que hemos estado viniendo a trabajar con inglés. Ok, welcome to you all. Guys, in this video I'm gonna be um, talking about Prisma PHP and Prisma PHP um, ORM, which now in this version 1.10 well i can't say and confirm that from this version go on i think your code going to be more stable if you are using the package prisma php environment for your php projects because from now the main goal was already established and reached because in the past when i start the project i was have a um, doubt or maybe not clear or or the objective was not clear so from go on from this version go on it's going to be stable maybe going to be changed but it's not going to be huge change like until now because it was some um change I have to decide to make for the package well the package now is already shipped into github if you go and make a try because I already upload the changes in github okay so I do want to talk about the documentation the <coughs> sorry the documentation is not prepared for this version in, in this case but i want to show you how it's going to be structured in the future and how i'm thinking to um, um, give the service in here the getting started it's going to be explained how this is going to be and i think i'm going to leave video for getting started installing the node package the sum package and the composer in this case maybe in the future i'm going to get the um get all those order so in this case it's going to be divided in the php environment and down here which say prisma php class usage it's going to be the prisma php orm if you decide to use that um, prisma php orm which it's making super easy the communication between your database and your PHP environment okay so that was a little part of the um, ordering and now well I said a little futures here you could just for the idea and the 
now we got joined to the newsletter which is very cool you just put your name and your email and as the package grow you going to receive an email and then you could come and review what changed and you could have more um, control of the changes what's going on in the package and if you are interested just put your name and email and you're going to be receiving an email from our um, part when it's update the version so well take a take a um, take a test you now and just um, try it just for curiosity or if you want and so on okay so after this well i'm going to start with the installation a CM, but I'm going to start showing what we're going to see in this video. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start talking about register. In this case, we're going to create register page, just a simple register page. Then we're going to complicate with database because it's going to be without database and then with database. So we're going to try to do all those stuff um, um, in like starter then complicate it a little bit and then we're going to start understanding more about the authentication business in prisma php environment loading this is going to make your um, we're going to build a small loading but it's going to be same time powerful and you're going to give all what you what is needed and we're going to make all um, the register and login role base if it's needed else you're going to decide how you want to implement your one we're going to discuss the out class which is already integrated in the ph in prisma php environment which is going to handle all authentication in prisma php then we're going to introduce in state manager which it's going to be combined when we start registering um, register and login because this state manager is quite useful when you are working with register and login make it easy and you are focuses you are focus is only on php and you are not um, um changing language like say because normally when you want to do click on this and that well normally javascript is who handling all those requests so we will start seeing all those stuff so let's start working on it okay so to start, what I'm going to do is copy this code and then come to my CM as always. Paste, enter, test out because it's about authentication. I'm going to test. Um, I'm going to use Tailwind for this um, web socket. Um, well, no, because not for now. Prisma PHP, I'm not going to install this time, but I'm going to show you how to install with updated version. So um, for this installation, I'm not going to accept to install Prisma PHP. So I'm going to say no to Prisma PHP, but in the updated version, I'm going to install Prisma PHP uh, ORM for our allows.
Okay, so I'm going to clean the screen and then say code. And I'm, I'm going to get access to the uh, this out folder and then code. Okay, I'm going to open a new environment in VS Code. Reduce leading. Okay, so here I'm going to start working. First, when you, after installing, what you have to do is install Composer dependencies. So it's very important because um, when you run the application, when this um, don't find the Composer installation, it's going to throw an error. So let's go on, run, run dev. Here. Okay. As you can see here, it's trying to get the .env file from Composer dependency and it's not found in and it's telling you where is the um, error found. So what I'm going to do is try to put the the server for now and then say composer install so it's very important after your EM download the project because maybe in the future I'm going to be uh, updating for maybe using a docker file or I'm going to see how to try to install one time the composer um, tool but not, not for now just install composer and you already to go on with your project npm or on dev now so here everything goes and then i'm going to refresh and voila now we have already running our prisma php environment now it is environment and the other one is orm so we're going to see um, how it's working now all right first thing first the row and the index have been changed. Now the row is going to be the prioritized version if you're going to work with Ajax in this case. So be aware of because we're going to see some um, some demonstration of it. But for now we're going to start continue with the system. So first thing first we're going to come and I'm going to search for okay. Um, I'm going to change my okay to before. Okay, I'm going to open Postman, but um, before I'm going to create here um, a user file to demonstrate how it's working, the index and the, the, the row, because it's important you to know, because in previous video was different. In now, it's handling only in this inside Bootstrap. No Bootstrap Ajax files is in it. No, only Bootstrap and which is going to handle two of the requests, which is going to be Ajax request or the normal, um, browser request okay so what i'm going to do is create a um, new file i'm going to create a new file here so i'm going to call it users here and uh, or let's say post similar or i'm going to say users yeah. okay index.php so here as you can see I'm just I'm going to put the p tag hello from users index. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is users and I got this hello from users index. Okay, now if I go to my get some space and uh, here in previous video we did have to check 
this header to make AJAX request. In this, well, updated version is not required. And as you can see, you get the user's index information. Hello from users. As you can see, the index file is going to be present if row is not present. So what about if I have a row file inside the user's folder? So in the user directory, what I want to say is uh, say row.php and know what is going to happen when I make an Ajax request, the row file is going to be the first one which is going to be load. So let's say here in the same p tag, um, let me make it different, a little different here. I'm going to say echo. So what I'm going to do is um, try to um, echo, okay, there we go, save it, okay, now as you can see, even in the web brow browser, which is taking precedence is the row file now, that is the difference between the index and the row now, it, they could live in the same directory, but the row it's going to be the precedence, so be aware of. So they, um, the index file is not going to be shown even in the web browser. And if you make an Ajax request, so it's going to be the row, the parent, which is going to be showing in both. If you go to the web browser, it's the row. And if I make Ajax request to the point, to the endpoint, it's going to be the row is taking place so for this maybe you could say okay user have an api and uh, api folder so i'm going to create a folder which is going to call api and inside api what i want to do is put the row which is going to be so i'm, I'm going to save this save the row file and refresh here and as you can see, I get in the information from user index, but the row now live inside the users and API. And if I come and make an Ajax request, now I'm getting the users index information. So what about how I'm going to get is just taking, say, I'm getting from the API and I am getting the row information. So be aware of, so if you want to make a row directory which is going to be proposed by showing in a web browser, well go with index. If you want to show in Ajax, well you're going to decide the row going to be have a row file inside and then it's going to be show what they well in this case could live inside the folder, but the parent is going to be a um, row and the index is not going to be shown so you have to decide for one um, one or another so you just put inside a folder which is going to cut up in this case and you have already done with the row index file no um, and then you when you're going to make uh, Ajax request well you just say users and happy and inside you have the row and it's going to be shown everything what you need with your Ajax request uh, but as you can see well in this file last um, priority when row file is inside in the same directory level so be aware of that okay next Let's talk a little about little, just touch a little about error handling in Prisma PHP environment. So I'm going to close these two. I think the point is already been have been explained. So I'm going to open the layout and the layout file have been improved. So as you can see, 
don't you don't have any PHP um, to the top which was the bootstrap um, opening file no we don't have we just have the content um, echoing out here so what about if I don't have the content in my um, parent layout when well, it's going to warn you that undefined variable content and here you got the warning and well you already done so remember um, as this point will content um, have to be inside you because you can't have any um, bunch of conditionally showing um, well if the content um, variable is not present it's going to be a um, complaint no? so you can do this too if you wish no problem but if you don't have maybe a con let's say content so it's going to be throwing this error and giving you more control of what going on in your layouts that's the main idea so what about child layouts so in child layouts, what I'm going to do is create a, a, a group. So I'm going to call it a public. And then here I'm going to set a customers. So in the that PHP. But in inside my public, what I'm going to do is create a layout file, which is going to be handling all other routes. No? So here, what I want to do is say layout the PHP. So in my layout the PHP, what it's going to do? I'm going to say um, PHP. Um, no, create a section. And before creating the section, I'm going to leave empty my layout. And then I'm going to go to customers customers so here as you can notice this error is very explicit and saying that the PHP child content in the layout which live in this directory is not explicitly um, applied so what you want to do is try to declare the, the the PHP tag in this case PHP or you can do the shirt hand and um, not content it's going to be a um, to do the content but it's not going to work because you have to get the child content child content and when you save well this error is going to go but how I don't have anything in my um, in my index so what I'm going to say customer hello okay say fine I have the information from my customers so now I can confirm that Leo is working properly so what about if I do the section well in this case if I view the pacers well this giving me the complete inside the section I have the hello customers um, information which is very handy for creating information inside your session and addressing things like that so we already have covered the public and maybe if there is an issue error with this well I'm going to be um, reviewing so how I told you the main idea is this and uh, maybe in the future um, how in here maybe could present any type of error is normal because this package is growing it's just getting a more complete objective where it's going to be um, um, how it's going to be running so from here these changes maybe it's going to be book fixes error fixes or improvement and this and that so but the main idea is going to be remain the same from beginning from now okay so for now what i'm going to do is create my authentication and login system so what i'm going to do i'm going to close 
board and then when I I'm going to create now my out and then inside I'm going to create my register register and then in there is that PHP so in this register it's very um, common to say that um, I'm going to register um, a user so I'm going to go in out and then register so I don't have anything here yet so I'm just I'm going to print out um, the hello from register just that so I already got my identifier um, located so now in this I'm not going to register a current or um, a user but I'm going to start introducing authentication in this case so we're going to talk a little about the authentication class in this case um, and go on so register going to create an authenticated user so for this I'm going to go to the lib and then in out folder this directory holds all about authentication um, class so we got two files here the out and the out config the out is the class which holds all the um, methods and properties needed for you handle your authentication and this is the configuration file where you want to establish all or what route it's going to be private and you're going to authenticate with user roles so this is the first look to authentication so remember in this case um, we want to start doing things very easy very easy so what I'm going to do I'm going to create a dashboard folder here and then that's going to be my row so here I'm going to say dashboard uh, inside the dashboard what I want to have is showing in the index file so index.php so I'm just going to put a Yes, hello from dashboard. Okay, so currently I already have my register and I have um, my authentication. So what I'm going to do is create a login system. So I'm going to say login now and then index.php. Okay. So now in this, I'm just going to say same as anyone, hello from login, login, so, okay. I have my dashboard, which is going to be private row, and then I have my login, which is going to be giving access to dashboard. Okay, for that, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to come to dashboard to show that dashboard is publicly accessible. So now, how am I going to restrict that dashboard is a private road or no, not private exactly, but is private for users which is not authenticated. For that, I'm going to come in my middleware in this case over here in lib middleware so i'm going to click in out middleware which already prepared as you can see here i have the red um, redirect function which if i go to redirect function as you can see is just setting the header and location and passing the url which is very handy to not um, writing all this location and this and that and um, it's easy to just redirect no so that makes a little bit um, easy you to just say uh, redirect me here and that's all okay now what I want to do for make the dashboard private so you're going to come here we already know the existence of middleware here okay so we're going to check in our configuration and go straight to private route. And as you can see, 
public roads is dash only because it's not, uh, everything is public currently. So you don't need to declare um, any public road or specific road. But what you want to make is restricted road. So here I have a example like say profile dashboard um, slash settings. Remember this is on one. Um, um, road one um, link which is going to be so here what I want to do is say uh, I um, want the dashboard to be validated as a private road so now as you can see when I go to dashboard it's redirecting me to hello login direct why because it's already know that dashboard is a private road and private road needs a credentials so we're going to discuss these um properties a little while but here you got the idea so now what i'm going to do let's say uh, in my login in my login i'm going to come and i'm going to declare um, no i'm going to work with php just for set the this user it's going to be authenticated so how are we going to authenticate so here is already giving me leap out out yes I need that um, well Copilot is already um, getting me all the information so in making me easy now so what I'm going to do is out I'm going to authenticate here you are authenticate so what I'm going to pass in this when you are not working with database and when you are working with um, just the role so I, as you can see here you got out role you can pass the out role direct to the to the um, authenticate because it know how to handle it as you can see here you say if the role is instance of out role, it's going to get the role value. So that's the that, that, that's the good part if you want to do that way. So we're going to do in two both ways. So I'm going to pass or send um, which from admin user. So what I'm going to say admin and uh, no. The important of the authenticate that you have to pass a valid or how long this token going to be available it's very important I'm going to pass a small documentation which you're going to put up um, the way that it's handling no so in out wait, where this out file gone okay let's go open and let me explain how this um, works so here we have it so as example we're going to pass 10 m means 10 minutes and one edge mean one hour but by default token validity is one hour so if you pass 10 minutes it's going to be valid by 10 minutes so remember for more information here you have it so one is means one second <laughs> easy as that one minute it's one m one day you got the one day and well go uh, so on so on maybe 365 days for the years maybe i could put a year there maybe later but where there is the idea so after i authenticating if i want to set a custom validity um how time it's going to be available that um, that loading so I going to put in this case one minute only one minute I want this um, user must be um, available in the dashboard site that depends on your um, project structure now so what I going to do is I'm going to save but before saving um, what I'm going to do is print the information in in this case um, right direct so because this when you authenticate it's going to 
pass you the JSON with tokens that is going to pass so you can print the token and um, so let's say echo JSON web token and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to echo out the with pre tag the structure of the session which is going to create so what I'm going to um, put here is anyway well done and this is going to be the out and then get payload the get payload function is going to return the session which it's in so when I set there here we have it so as you can see just now I set the token and I set an admin user admin role in this case so I'm going to duplicate the tab and then when you duplicate it auto refreshing remember so I have one minute to be inside in dashboard so let's test in dashboard now I have access because I set already the authenticate so here after one minute this dashboard is going to be and um, the session going to be expired and I'm going to be right redirect to a um, user login so as you can see for getting authentic user is um, it depends on the 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 project structure if you're going to use a database to save or store JSON web tokens because in, in next videos we're going to complicate it, this information more and more because maybe we include a um, github session and storage a lot of stuff them tokens from github so let's see if i'm ready okay there we go as you can see after one minute is now because i'm going to comment this information and um, to not be creating and so um i got one minute to be inside in dashboard from now so after i comment this and i refresh after one minute it's going to be redirect to a um, straight to authentic um, loading is that the information and the behavior what i prepared all the information what is is needed okay for out for work with authentication you have to know where is the secret key living the secret key is living normally as any um, environment here out secret and as you can see I put a comment where I say secret key development only and which you have to replace with your own secret key remember this is for development only because this is going to encrypt your JSON web token so now I'm going to refresh and uh, now as you can see I have been redirected to login and now if I try to get into dashboard easy as that I'm not going to get the information to the draft that to dashboard so what about if I want to get the information from um, the session or the payload which have been set so I'm going to come to dashboard in this dashboard so I'm going to get the user and display the user so I'm going to say um, p tag and then inside here I'm going to set um, before this what I want to do is set my PHP uh, here I'm going to use out and will I have my new out and then here I'm going to print it out the authenticated user so get payload which bringing me an array and then what I going to do remember what I do is get the information set up here in out 
here payload name which is road so with how i going to get that where when i get my payload when i get my payload i going to get the information from the role so that is the good part of this so when i come i could put my payload here but when i use in session in this case i'm just going to say get payload and then i go to dashboard Oops. okay i think i have to um, now where is loading okay and come at this save have information and now I'm going to go to dashboard and uh, as you can see now I have my admin information in my dashboard easy as that easy as that get payload it's going to return the information which I'm setting in the loading here as you can see because this car this uh, is mixed which means it going to be any kind of um, information you want to make like array if you want to store a class or things like that you have to know how to convert and those things so here I'm going to say out role and here I could get the admin or the user class because it's enum but mainly I think it's a class not, not, not Okay, so when I save, I'm getting the, um, the information back to load in. Okay, check this different. Here I'm saying that the user is authenticated. Here, user. But why I can't get access dashboard? No, sure, sure enough. I'm getting access but here as you can see I get in the information from users a uh, use user information in my dashboard but what about if I want only admins can access the dashboard not user so for that I'm going to come in my out config and then having the dashboard declared as a private row and then here you got examples you can do it just for that so let's say i'm going to copy this just for a um, sake of demonstration because mainly this is the way of um, having your private role so i'm going to remove the out user because i'm going to allow only only admin users can access the dashboard so as you can see as a user i'm i'm coming um, let's go to dashboard okay as a user i'm could get access because i have been declared my dashboard as a role base so i'm going to save this but as you can see nothing's happening what about so yes it is role based you want to put through here and no save this and it's denied why is denied because users user role user can't access the dashboard because it's private role and it's role based and so allowing only admins can be accessed in this role um, admin role so well what about if i am an admin so if i try to go to dashboard again let's say i'm going to dashboard it's denied because i'm at here as you can see when i refresh is user but if i log in if i come and i say okay i'm going to log in with admin credentials oops uh admin. there we go so now when I get with admin, as you can see, now it's admin, and then I'm come and say dashboard. Okay, let me see.
what is happening here. Okay. Um, dashboard. We are setting admin here. Yes. Uh -huh. That is the idea. Okay. E let me see. Why is behaving? Okay. This has to be updated. So, um, well, as finished the video, I'm going to update the package because here I'm getting the payload, and which have this, which if I print the user, um, oops, it's not getting the correct user so mainly my I was trying to make with database also that was um, look like it's gone in is miss so here that going to be updated right away so let's say now I'm going to go to dashboard and try to access um, user role is empty so that was the uh, issue save and well there we have it so okay guys that going to be updated as the video finish because that can be there yeah that was a little bit of confusing so Afterward, as you can see now, I can't get access to my dashboard because I refresh in here and I um, have been disabled. So, but if I come now, let's t start testing for now because we was testing um, how to find the error which was uh, so user and if I getting with user so and getting in dashboard. Um, well, it's not going to be happening. So, but I, in my out middleware, what I'm going to do is um, make the um, redirect to um, to deny. So that going to be um, denied um, for user. No. So here we have it. We got user, which is denied for dashboard. Dashboard. Okay. Here we have it. Y y you can access. Um, as a user but as an admin yes okay so let's go to um, now there we go easy as that guys we have authenticated user when you logged in with a um, specific role so what about child roles let's say the dashboard is for user and admins but the users section it's not going to be allowed for users it's going to be allowed only for the app admins so i'm going to come inside my dashboard row and i'm going to create another row it's going to call users and inside the users i'm going to create an index file just for um testing proposed so i'm going to say I'm not going to put anything inside here. 
anything inside here anything in my user because it's not going to he is just going to be a, a showing the the admin and this and that so i'm going to create a php um php and then i'm going to use the um, out library and then create a new and then i'm going to echo um the yes get payload that so now in my easy as this in my login I'm going to maintain the login file normally, but in my authentication row, I'm going to declare another one, which dash dashboard is going to be allowed for admin, and it's going to be allowed for user. Here we go. So I just put comma, and then user, and then now, as a user, I can get in I'm going to log in as a user. Save this. Here we got user. So let's say I'm going to go to dashboard. Yes. Now, ready. All right. But what about if I want to go to dashboard slash users? So here I'm just displaying the user role, but as you can see, as a user logging, I can't get access to users. But now I'm going to restrict that users only for admins users. So I'm going to come to my out config and then I'm going to declare or create a new and then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to put comma here and then a dashboard that users is going to be allowed only for admins. Easy as that, guys. We got two um two road in dashboard users which it's going to be um, a load only for admin users so let me see how it's going to go okay here you already check in the dashboard users but you have to make that um this road private because currently is not making the validation for the private road so be aware of because out out middleware it's going to ask if is authorized road which authorized road is going to be the private roads you declared here so have to have the dashboard and if you're going to set a uh, um, authenticate with um, role base so what I want to do here is I'm going to set that this dashboard user is now authenticated role so when I save this as you can see it's already redirecting me to users and um, loading because um, dashboard users is denied for users user m um, role but what about if i say i'm logging as an admin and here i'm going to come and go to dashboard normal because i'm admin and then i'm going to go to users normal easy as that guys you already have your authentication um prepared so here we go how are you going to make your um your um database situation so i'm going to show you but i'm going to um um copy and paste for a sake of time because we are already out of time so i'm going to create the loading and the how and then when well, you're not going to receive the credit and um, the database credential you have to use your one but i'm going to use a um, a postgres database just for showing okay so um for start what i want to do close all this and then i'm going to show you how it's going to be handled this information the state manager which is very cool and handy way to handle your form request to your database and getting information and displaying to the user all right let's get it so loading 
I'm going to copy paste from the information what I already have been prepared. Uh, let's see if I get to that information. Okay, I have my authentication. Okay, now for this scenario, what I have to do is to install Prisma. To install Prisma, well, I'm going to update the package with um, with Prisma PHP update project. So what I'm going to do is npx PHP because if I come and how I'm going to use Prisma now because I'm going to work with database credentials now and um, user role or database. So what I'm going to do is npx PHP um, update the project. So here I'm going to update the project. I say yes. Um, Web sockets. Well, currently I'm not going to. Yes, Prisma PHP over and now. I'm going to say yes for waiting to inst um, to have been installed. Remember, when you install Prisma PHP, you have to update your Composer package because that is the way how it Prisma going to be um, including all those information. Okay, here we have it. Okay, as you can see, when you choose Prisma PHP, well, you already have information here in the database. Um, in the database. So, what we're going to do now is install Composer, update Composer package, but Composer install if you run this command well it's going to um, complain and it's going to say that um, the log file is doesn't co um, have the correct version of your composer because this composer um, have been installed the um, some information for using with php this ui business so remember when you're going to um, run afterward you installing P um, prisma php rm what you want to do is composer update this command what's going to do is update your package so here it's going to start updating and then it's going to download and ask you for updating so i'm going to say yes well yes because it's going to um, update all those packages needed for this version so there is downloading everything what is needed so now um, i have my prisma PHP in, in ORM environment inside. So what I'm going to do is copy this um, information and paste, save, and now what next is pass my database credentials so for this what i want to do yes Let me see. This looks so cool. Okay, guys, there we have it. I'm going to say because I know it's already passed. So what we're going to do is test. Okay, I'm going to make the migrate. I'm using Postgres. I'm using Postgres. So it's going to be npx um, prisma migrate dev. So it's going to migrate all this information and this information is going to be in the documentation. So remember about that, migrate dev. And here it's going to start connecting to, um, to Railway. Guys, Railway is a free open um, to 
you have um, your information so let me introduce you in where we just uh, in a easy way because it's you to have to have this information to um, make your test here it is so railway that app you create your login with your credentials with, with uh, register however so here ask me um, yes I have some information there so I'm going to lose it yes no problem okay Okay, here we have it. We have already created our um, database um, credentials and all those stuff them. So what I'm going to do npx and create now my Prisma um, class for my um, database connection to um, with um, Postgres. As you can see, no class here. So npx php um, generate class for this. So here I have uh, all my class needed. So I'm going to say npm um, dev because I think I have, have already prepared everything for this. So I'm, I'm going to close this. This is for loading. Now I have the information. So what I'm going to do is um, go to loading section. Out loading. I'm going to refresh. And there we go. We already have or loading what about register so i'm going to um, copy and paste the register information from my from here copy here okay so okay now as you can see I have my loading page prepared. I'm just copy and paste, remember? Sign up, I have my register page. So what about, and how I'm going to register? So in register page, guys, this make very easy because I'm going to show you how I'm going to create a user and then you're going to see in scenario the state manager of use of state manager which is how it's going to be implemented here in so in this case we have the store which is the state manager in this case if i go to the state manager class as you're going to see is a session version but it's managing by own session in a state and you have full control of it and say if you say restart the state and if you pass through for player form storage it's going to clean up from the session which very handy if you want to just register the user and this um, then it's going to be clean up that um, session so what I'm going to do maybe in the future to not be cleaning everything, maybe if you want to handle any kind of other type of session, well, maybe you're going to clean a specific key. So it's going to be for that too, because remember maybe you say, okay, I'm going to clean up a specific key and then I'll set it that, that way. But here we go. So for this scenario, we got, I call it, store and the store is going to store the post the complete post and i'm storing the name and the password so i got the name i got the email and i got the password so in this scenario what i'm going to do is i'm going to register a user so for this what i'm going to do i'm going to open another one and i'm going to um, another terminal in npx prisma studio so in my prisma studio you're going to see that I don't have any user yet. No user information. But what about if I come and create, I'm going to create a Jeff as an admin. Yes. I'm going to create this here. I'm going to create this user, Jeff, as an admin admin user so 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter one, two, three, and okay, I'm going to save this information in the register. Okay, and Jeff, one, two, three, and then I'm going to create the user if everything one user role. Okay, there is a problem. We don't create any user. So what I'm going to do is connect or create. Save. Connect or create is going to have a where okay and this one to be admin. No, admin. Let's see if it works. Save. Wow. Easy as that, eh? Now we have a, a admin role created in one single request of useful. Here we have user Jeff Gmail and this have a role automatically is already assigned and if I go check my roles easy as that so now as you can see I already have signed in with my um, create successfully a um, user so I'm going to create another one but this going to be user so Okay, here what we're going to do is I'm going to save this information. Okay, this information has been lost, but as you can see, the information what say a um, user um, created successfully, it's maintained even I refresh the page. As you can see, I redirecting the user, but what about it because I'm using the store so it's reset it's clean the session but all the session before it was clean it was be assigned to the message that is the super coolest way that you want to get check this the store and the stage already aligned and here I'm setting this one too so be aware of now I'm going to try to create the same user with the same email and you're going to see the refresh but the information going to maintain here jeff this and when page refresh by default all this information going to be clean up but how i using the store it's going to maintain the information then it's going to pass and check this okay here is a user already exists and it exists here yeah? but all the information maintains and you don't need to use now as you can see i don't have any javascript in my in my php file and you're using everything with php this is very useful when you are dealing with a, any complicated situation so what i'm going to do i'm going to delay and this i'm going to say i'm um, just mario and then i'm going to register mario with one two three and here you're going to see in this case it's going to refresh but it's going to say it user is going to be created successfully but the information has been lost because it's clean up there you go user created successfully so i'm going to check if this information from the user role it has been updated i'm got user and then i have this information here now Good. okay so now what I'm going to do what I'm going to do is come 
because here it's going to change a little bit and this I'm going to finish explaining with this information so I'm going to come in out configuration and now uh, some things it going to change in the out because what going to happen in this case I'm setting up the information as you can see when I logged in I'm going to try to now load in so when I try to load in I'm going to get the user here I'm using Prisma because Prisma um, where I'm easy all this information I'm going to leave the code in the um, github repository so you can get all the information and analyze the information as you can see here I'm not using any kind of um, story manager because I am, I'm redirecting direct to a specific um, dashboard or cells no so here going to be same as to the dashboard dashboard not cells if you want to redirect any of so I'm going to say this going to be redirect because it's going to be the role um, admin so I'm going to say if is admin will get to the users so as you can see here I'm billing my users information easy as that I'm billing my information when I'm using Prisma okay so what I'm going to do is just come So here we're going to do only a little change because here the information, user role. So if you want to set a specific type of authentication, you have to modify this information. First one, the payload name is going to be whatever you're going to save, like say, the user information so it's going to be the user information which is going to be stored so here you can come and modify and you could say user which is going to be the user information and if you wish you could change the the, the variable here it's going to be user uh, well you have to change here too user uh, remember this is going to be um, oh, not there user user and here to be user too because they be replacing this one so here user I think I'll, I'll change it is going to be done that that easy as that so now let's try let's give a try so jeff i'm the admin one two three try to log in and let's see what happened okay dashboard users um okay line seven dashboard users line seven okay as you can see the good part of prisma php is already giving me advice that i'm trying to convert an array so what i'm going to do how this is array and i know how the array is going to be structured so what i'm going to do is i'm going to print this information first and then i'm going to get the information from pre and then so is just this print um, I'm going to print remember get payload save here we go I got the information from admin and the way I'm going to get just a specific easy as this an array user role because I want the role admin save I get the admin so 
As you can see, now I'm going to say a uh, uh, log dot. I think in dashboard I have. You see, if I this is the same, I have to fit the dashboard. So here, yeah, I'm getting. Um, I have to get the user role here. Um, user role, and I get the information correct. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to. Um, set that button to, to log out from dashboard because um, as you can see this is setting and it's going to be handled for one minute as you can can go on and see so I'm going to build a form form and then post and the good part refresh by yourself post and then okay log out button and no the magic just get running so i'm going to say if is post out loading and redirect to out slash loading okay here it is this post it's coming from the booster but mainly it's on the settings it live on the setting is a request method as you can see here you won't get all this information so in the documentary i'm going to show everything what is needed to, to know so now if i press log out easy as that so what about i can't now if i refresh here i'm done getting information I have been saved. Mm -hmm. That's work. Okay. Oh. Yes. Okay. Now, our middleware is going to come in game now what about as you can see you just configure your here Okay, we register, let's go to the dashboard. Okay, I think you already know what happened in this case because I'm trying to get the payload because if the payload exists. So what I want to do? Okay, there we have it. Now we got the information. So I always remember to validate the information or the existence of the information to, to you to don't have this kind of um, um, information on you. So now, okay, my, how I update the, the, the package have been override everything here. So what I'm going to do just the control Z if I get to no no information. So it, this is going to be but the dashboard dashboard is dashboard is a um, private role and then dashboard users was a private role too. So here we have and then we have was working and so I have here these two information is going to be used so I want to copy and paste, just easy as that, dashboard, and then, okay, I have information there, compiler is helping a lot. So now yeah. now as you can see, well, when you modify your um, out configuration, better come if you want to update before, before having, 
you just come and you put any excluded file here so you just going to come here and say um, don't molest uh, for this lib prisma and uh, not the out and which file so which file you want to um, have any don't touch the configuration and then when you update the the, the file it's not going to be um, the the out config file to be aware of because now I if I go to dashboard well it's going to redirect me to um, um to loading so what about if I loading with this user I say m and one two three and this is user so as you can see I have the user and cm applies this rule for same as that user so dashboard users it's going to be allowed only for admin so what about dashboard I think yes this is kind of yes okay we are getting some interesting user role information so we're going to save here and okay ah mainly uh some stuff gone and overwriting okay <laughs> dashboard users when i load in as a um, user and uh, user role and um, if is yes okay no problem some overrides gonna guys so here I'm going to say just dashboard so well it's already expired so here I would get payload if null and you want to redirect in a specific so for this I think there is one what is very much useful is authenticated and this authenticated is going to return true or false as you can see this boolean and then you could make your um, equivalent of this so if the user is logged in in this case let's say um, I'm going to log in with the M1, what was it? Was um, let's try with one user what is not exist to have uh, so let's say MS. I don't know, I think invalid user. And if you can see, is refreshing. So let's say in M, I think it's not, uh, I think it was Mario. Yes, okay, it's M. So as you can see in my dashboard, but what about if I want to um, out? and loading loading um, it's redirecting me because I'm already authenticated so that's the, this is the um, this is useful when you are trying to make authentication no? so there we have it but let me see if I already applies users uh, then you have the users uh, in your um, out configuration this was overwritten which is not because I was waiting that behavior but here we go so what I'm going to do I'm going to copy this and let's see if this is the correct one so I'm going to remove this Okay, here we go. Dashboard. No, okay, good. One, two, three. Okay, I'm already have done it. No, let's say users. I think I have to check.
how this um, it's going to affect okay next thing I want to introduce you is the token refresh as you can know the part of the token refresh is automatically so after one minute this um, session it's going to be expired be aware of but what about if I want to auto refresh each time and I don't want to be have set any um, amount of time so you can put one hour waiting or such a time in your loading here in your loading um, when you are loading the user when you authenticate I say one minute let's say if I already said so after one minute it's going to close here we have so as you can see it closed but what about if I have in my configuration I say auto refresh the token and I'm going to set to true this time so when I set to true what is going to be happen is each time when I uh, make any kind of request and if this set it's going to be auto refreshing by itself that CM token which is going to be identified until I press log down or close the session by any kind of uh, movement so I want to get in with this user so here I'm going to try to uh, have this information and afterward one minute it's going to be closed so here it's going to be as a task oops here I'm not validating the users row let me see if I have this correct. So I'm going to copy and paste. Maybe this going that's going to solve this issue. Maybe I don't know. Yes, it's CM. Uh, not changed yet. So we save and this is users user so ah of role admin only allowed for role admin and it's not restricting how it was done in the previous um, in the previous do I set the role good it's user user yes we good Mm -hmm. this is good ok what I'm going to do I'm going to go to users I'm just going to press and refresh and you're going to see how it, the tokens is going to be refreshed that's going to be the last information so what I'm going to do I'm going to say ok uh, And this past more than this the, the one minute it's already there so there is the information guys so um, um thank you for for the attention all those stuff and well any kind of recommendation remember from going now the um all the information the authentication this is the first look for authentication and well the override give me a little um, complication here but as you can see well it was very easy to implement in your system uh, in your application environment so I'm going to be changing some little stuff them because there was the key um, um, aware of how we going to handle when you are treating with database so this was an overview and well um, if you have any question well leave in comment below and uh, I'm going to um, try to answer as soon as possible if I get the information for your um, question no? okay then happy coding see you in the next videos